the sprinter from Mercedes-Benz, the iconic workhorse. Behind us is the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter van. As you can see, this is a panel van. It's a 316 CDI. It's powered by a 2.1 turbo diesel engine and it's coupled to a six-speed manual. You can also get a seven-speed automatic. This is rear-wheel drive. There's other rear-wheel drives to choose from and you can get front-wheel drives as well. The versatility doesn't end there either, Ben. This is the L3 H2, which means it's just under 7 metres long and just under 2.4 metres high. There is a range of different heights and lengths to choose from. You can also vary payloads in them, but the actual compartment inside for storage is the exact same width throughout the range. You can get engines, you can get gearboxes, you can get lengths, you can get heights. You can basically make the sprint your own, can't you, Annabelle? Yeah, you can style it to whatever your business needs. Saying that, I'm going to be having a look at the exterior and the styling. I'll be looking at the interior, the practicality, the functionality and the build quality. We'll both be driving it and then I'll bring you the verdict on whether or not this is the van for you. If you like cars, news, the latest automotive reviews, why not subscribe to the channel? Hit the notification bell and that way you'll know every time we upload some new content. Thank you. Stepping around to the front of the van, the first thing you notice is the Mercedes-Benz badge. It's commanding and it looks great. Unlike the Vita that we looked at last week, it doesn't have the perforated grille with chrome inlay. It does, however, have the colour-coded one that's an optional extra of £90. The headlights are moulded and they are a slightly different design in this newer model and they sculpt nicely with the bumper. When it comes to the bumper, this recess has a function, it's not just for style. You can stand in it, pop yourself up and clean the windshield, which is a really handy function that's been rolled over from previous versions, and I approve. As you can see, you've got the really big windscreen and the nice sloping bonnet, which gives you great visibility, especially on country roads. You've got the beasting aerial, finishing the look. There are lots of safety features with the Sprinter too. It comes with active brake assist, headlight assist and hill start assist. Coming to the side of the van, the first thing you notice are the 16-inch steel wheels with high-profile tyres, adding to the comfort, making it more bounce than bump. You have electrically operated door mirrors with blind spot detection, and you do have the options for heated and power folding. Our Sprinter comes with one side sliding door and crosswind assist, making it safer to drive in high winds. You also have this plastic insert that runs down the full side of the van. You've got nice big door handles. Now, as the Sprinter is a diesel van, it takes add blue, which you would add. Oh, wait a minute, you don't add it here. You normally would do, as this is where you put the fuel in. Hmm, wonder where it might be. With the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, the add blue is here. Coming round to the back of the van, you're reminded that it's a Sprinter and this is the 316 CDI version. It's got nicely sculpted lenses, this colour is lovely, it even matches the Planet Auto logo. It has a nice high visibility rear-versing camera right at the top there to make manoeuvring nice and easy. You've also got a high-level brake light. The Mercedes-Benz logo is uniquely placed here, making it look great. And if you're wondering where the spare wheel is, it's tucked up underneath the van. First thing you'll notice when you step into the Sprinter is there are a lot of hard plastics, but it's a robust work fan. That's what it needs to be. It needs to be strong. It needs to be able to take a daily beating. It's saying that it's amazing how far the Sprinters come. I mean, you have styling in here that you'd find in an A-Class. These retro vents look really cool. You've got a decent sized infotainment system and it's very comfortable. You've got three seats. When it comes to functionality, you've got all round electric windows. We've got the optional power folding door mirrors. They're also heated and they're electrically adjusted and they have blind spot detection in them as well. When it comes to the steering wheel, you've got haptic sensors here and you've got operations for your media system and your fuel computer. Fuel computer in between two very clear dials gives you economy, stats, you can also see your add blue levels. To the right hand side, you've got your automatic lights. You can also adjust the height of your beam start engine stop button, which I didn't expect to see on a van, ever. In the center, this new stylized area with a seven inch touchscreen. Can upgrade to one that's over 10, but this one is perfectly functional, does everything it needs to. Even has an HD camera for reversing. 
It's got DAB, satellite navigation. You can set some of the van settings here as well. Things like ESP, active brake assist, blind spot assist, attention assist. That's the thing about this van. It is packed full of safety. You also have cruise control. What do you want to do? And that's the voice activated Mercedes-Benz system here that allows you to set various settings. And there she goes again. Shortcut buttons for your camera, telephony, nav, map. You've also got these nice toggle switches. If you want to silence Mrs. Mercedes, just press the return button on the screen. The switch gear in here is very, very good. And we have the optional Tempmatic climate control here as well. Shortcut buttons and two toggle switches. Two USB-C ports. You can also get a smoker kit on this vehicle as well. You've also got your six-speed manual gearbox here. And up here I've got the interior light. Decent light, gives a good throw. We've also got shortcut buttons as well. Now when it comes to practicality in here, as you can see, I could literally be another foot taller. But six foot three, very comfortable. Nice figure hugging seats, but not too tight. Just keep you nice and upright whilst cornering. Very well finished as well. Very robust, quite hard material, but still very comfortable. One thing that is missing off this compared to the Vito is I don't have an armrest. However, you do seem to have like a roller coaster grab handle for the passenger in the middle. The seats operate manually, height adjustment, forwards, backwards, and there is no electronic lumbar support. When it comes to the steering wheel, forwards, backwards, height adjustment. When it comes to storage, you've got two door pockets. You've got a lower one. Above that, about 10 water bottles. Moving to the front of the van, I have three storage points. I've got a chewing gum pot, which also has a cup holder that it sits in. To the left of that, there's another cup holder. There's a large storage area here as well. The same in the middle. And to the left, you've got another two cup holders and a lip over it and a large storage area. I also have some rather natty coat hooks. As standard, this is a handle. It is also connected to some more storage. There's also the optional door handles here. You've also got a step at the bottom as well with reinforced plastic. Up here, you've got overhead storage. I love overhead storage in a van. You can fit in big books. You could even get a record size bag up there as well. You've also got good sized sun visors as well. When it comes to the side of the van, as you can see, we've got one sliding door. Big handle, nice and easy to open. Once open, there's a handle here to aid you getting into the back. We've got a recessed step here with hard plastic. And as you can see, there's lots of tethering points throughout the van. There's also this rail system as well, that's an optional extra. And that's 225 pounds. It does go the full length of the van though. The Sprinter is as versatile as your business. You've got three load heights and four lengths. You can also get different payload weights as well. So there is a van out there to suit your needs. It's quite staggering. We've got the additional wood that goes all the way up to the roof. And that's an option of 315 pounds. Our model is the H2, which puts it just under 2.6 meters high. It's also just under seven meters long. Payloads vary dependent on which model and trim and version you buy. And as you can see, I can stand up in here. As you can see, you've also got extra storage up here, which is carpeted. Stepping around to the rear of the vehicle, you unlock it using the button on the key fob. Click once. As you can see, you've got a big, decent door handle, easy to grab. As you can see, the door opens fully out like this. You've also got another handle here and a lock and unlock, which um, I don't even know they have those in the back of doors. This door unhinges by pulling in this lever here. This door opens the same way, allowing for ease of loading. As you can see, we've got a stowaway because I just managed to squidge him in and aptly he's called squidge. When it comes to compartment width, it's just under 1.8 meters wide. It's the same on all the sprinters. However, lengths and heights do vary. You also have a handle here to aid you getting in the back. Onward squidge. In true style, it's August, it's summer, and yes, it's torrential rain. Welcome to the sunny Lake District. Exactly. But I suppose we come to expect this a bit more now, don't we? Mind you, it is the perfect weather to test the 
the Mercedes Sprinter. How can I help you? Aha! What would you like to do? <laughs> Welcome. Uh, yes, I've just demonstrated that this Mercedes Benz has voice activated controls. You can set various settings. Could you repeat your input, please? Um, no, I'm trying what? to do a review, but thank you. Right, I'll, I'll, let me just go back on that option there. There we go. Back to the map now. So we can't really say that. What I will say is it's powered by a 2143cc engine or 2.1. It's turbocharged, it's diesel. It's also coupled to a six speed manual. You can also get automatics and other engine sizes as well, can't you? That's right, Ben. I like the fact that it's versatile. And this one is H2, L3, and the width is 2.345 meters. So it's quite wide. And what does L3 mean? Well, L3 means it's a touch under seven meters long. Saying that, it's, it's, it's I, I know this sounds completely preposterous. It's quite nimble and you kind of forget you've got seven meters. It's really strange. It's, um, it's a van that doesn't feel its size at all. Even though when you look at it, it is absolutely huge. I mean, when we had the Vito, I thought that was big and I felt quite daunted until this turned up and then I realized that you could probably fit the Vito inside the Sprinter. Saying that, Annabelle will be driving this whilst I take the shots. Da, 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 da. Yes, you'll be fine. Ah. You've driven commercials before, you've driven pickups with trailers, so it's not really a problem. I'll just go very, very slowly. Economy wise, not bad at all, between 35 and 37 miles to the gallon. That's not bad. That's no, bad. not bad okay. at all. And it's Euro 6. I think that's pretty much the same as the Vita, wasn't it? I think it was. And this van is considerably bigger. Power delivery is very good. That means you've got a lot of low down power. So if you put your foot down, it's just there. It's instant. There's no turbo lag. And Do you find that with every gear then, Ben, that you have power behind you? Well, relatively speaking, obviously you can't pull off from a junction in sixth. That's but, true, but that's common sense, well, I'm hoping. Yeah, so yes, yeah, there's power readily available. That is, is good to know, that is really good to know. But if you do put your foot down, this beast can be quite nippy. Punchy, torquey engine. And it is a great combination with this six-speed. Gearbox-wise, very solid box, six speed, not notchy, feels great, and it's at the right height as well. It is on the dashboard like most vans. It means that there's no problem pulling onto dual carriageways. There's also no problem doing A roads and B roads because, yes, okay, it is a touch wide, but most of the roads in the UK are built for this as long as you don't start going down really, really, really thin roads like the one we've just passed. <laughs> and what's the ride like in the Sprinter? Well, it's very comfortable. There is an element of bounce, but we're not carrying the payload that this vehicle can carry. There's very little wallow, I would say. I Being suppose a passenger, when you're a driver, yeah. you don't notice it as much. So getting a passenger's perspective on wallow is a better idea, isn't it? But I wouldn't say there's much wallow, would you add that? I would say that there's less than I would expect for a vehicle of this size. Being a passenger, I think, is different to how it feels to being a driver. Very true. It's not much body roll at all, actually. That's good. Steering-wise, it's, it's an interesting one. It feels weighted when you go in a straight line, but the harder you turn, the lighter it gets. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Which is very good, especially if you're carrying a load. Yeah, it's very well balanced steering. My word, look at all the heavy water around here. There's standing water galore. But this diesel power just keeps plowing through without absolutely any problem. It, it hasn't faced it at all, has it? It hasn't. No. No, it's a great vehicle to travel in this. Now, one thing you will know, if you haven't got a load and you turn sharply or try and pull out of a junction, you will get wheel spin. But it's the same in a pickup or anything like that. You expect it. The brakes are very good. You've got discs all round. You've also got, now, I didn't expect this. In the Vito, we have the old school MB handbrake. So you have the pedal on the floor and you have the release handle on the right. On this, it's all electronic like the cars. And it's also got auto-release as well. 
so when you're about to pull off it will release like the car and it has hill hold assist as well. Now Mercedes-Benz always look out for your safety with the Vito you could get options like blind spot detection. On our van, well, it's packed full of safety, isn't it, Annabelle? Yes, it's got way more. This comes with active brake assist, adaptive brake light, airbags, attention assist, crosswind assist, headlight assistant, and hill start assist. I've also got blind spot detection in my mirrors as well, and it works very well. It is a welcome addition, especially while traveling down the dual carriageway with a vehicle of this length. Now, I think the biggest change for me in the Sprinter is this new cabin. It's far more like a car than the Vito was. I mean, for example, you've got these retro vents that you find on the A-Class. This particular model is a seven inch touchscreen and it comes with live traffic capability. It's also voice activated as well, so you can set various settings in the car. It's not got the same functionality as the cars, but it does have limited, which is very good. Well, that's it, I mean, the aircon, we tested it before, didn't we? And it cleared the windscreen in literally seconds. no time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, literally a few seconds. And it's a big windscreen to clear. It is. And from a passenger point of view, you've got plenty of room. As we've mentioned before, there's very little body roll. However, my favorite feature is that there's not one, but two grab handles. Makes it very easy and versatile to get in and out, especially when you face some challenges in terms of mobility. So you've got the one that's attached to the door here, which is handy for climbing in and out. And you've got the one above you. Um, further up as well, there's lots of storage. There is. That's the one thing I noticed was missing in the Vito, but it is a smaller van, so it makes perfect sense. Uh, oh, what I would put up there is like maps and that maps kind of thing. Maps when you've got GPS. Makes sense, Annabelle. Okay, that's old school. As with every vehicle we get, we get a rather highly specced vehicle. So. Without further ado, Annabelle's now going to go through the options that are fitted to this particular Sprinter. That's right, Ben, and funnily enough, that shelving unit we were just talking about is an option, priced at £145. This van does come with quite a few. It's got metallic paint, that's £665. The Aircon Semi-Automatic Control Tempmatic, that's £970. That's what we saw in the Vita, wasn't it? Yeah. That's £970. The navigation pack is £670. The reversing camera is £440. The blind spot assist option is £410. The eco start stop function is £260. And the electrical parking brake is also £260. There's a load securing wheel system that you can have as an optional extra. And that's Very well spec'd out, isn't it? Sorry, yeah, <laughs> it's all right. It's £225. The radiator grille frame in the vehicle colour is an option and that comes in at about £90. That does make it look very smart though. Yeah. The grab handles for the driver's and co-driver's door is an actual option. Yeah. I didn't realise that before. Not bad for a £60 and it's something I would definitely pay for. You can get a smoker package for the smokers out there and there's a coat hook in the cab that will set you back £15. So these are the options fitted to our van. When it comes to your van, you can pick and choose. Very well said. The Sprinter range starts at just under £24,500. The model we have here goes for just over £34,000. However, it does come with quite a few of the optional extras. It's versatile and it ticks all the boxes. You can virtually make this vehicle your own. Let's see how it copes with this water in the Lake District. Look at that. Diesel power straight through, absolutely no problem. Since we've been out, there's a lot of standing water. The one thing I love about a van is, well, you have a massive windscreen, you have a sloping bonnet, so you've got a great view, but you're considerably higher than all other vehicles as well. So you can see any hazards coming very, very easily. That's the thing about this van, isn't it, Annabelle? It's got lots of cool things. I mean, for example, in your vehicle, then all of a sudden it will lock all the doors. Things that you just see on cars. Yes. In general, Ben, what do we think of the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter van? Well, the panel van that we have is the 316 CDI, and I'm very impressed by it. I honestly thought that seven meter long van, or just under, would be a handful, but it, it's not. Maybe it's all the vehicles I'm driving, or it could be just the fact that it seems to feel far more like a car than you give it credit for. Yes, obviously you've got a higher ride height, which means you've got a better view of the road, but it's agile, it's peppy, it's not quite as wide as you'd think, even though it is 
I think it's two meters, three, four, five, something ah. like that. Oops. Wheel I mean, spin. yes, you will get wheel spin as I just demonstrated then, but we've got no load in it. But it's, it is a great all rounder, it really is, and you can, it's versatile as well, isn't it, Annabelle? It is, it does tick all the boxes. And with the optional extras that you can choose from, you can make this vehicle your own. In various lengths and heights, the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter van is versatile and stylish. It's cost-effective too, with prices starting from just under £24,500 on the road for a 211 CDI. The model we have here is the 316 CDI panel van L3 H2 and costs just over 34000 with optional extras. It has a 2.1-litre diesel turbo engine and a six-speed manual gearbox. With so many engines, gearboxes, heights and lengths to choose from, you can tailor the Sprinter to meet your business needs. This includes front or wheel wheel drive options too. Standard features include a co-driver's double seat and cruise control. However, there's a wide range of optional features to choose from including tempmatic aircon, reversing camera, blind spot assist and sat nav to name but a few. You can even buy coat hooks. If you're looking for a van for your business needs, the Sprinter from Mercedes-Benz is definitely worth a closer look.